These noble animals, known today as Lipizzaners, are Europe's oldest domesticated breed of horse. Although born dark in color, their coats will usually turn white, adding to their attraction. For over 450 years, they have been associated with the Habsburg monarchy and the Spanish riding school of Vienna, whose performances of classical riding have been seen by thousands. But their history and the story of their survival is truly remarkable. At their first annual general meeting, the International Lipizzana Union discussed their concerns over the future of the Lipizzana. These trainers, breeders and enthusiasts are deciding how to promote this particular breed and sharing in their passion for this magnificent horse. The Lipizzana population is in danger and that's why they have Lipizzaner is a unique cultural treasure um, to all the world, not just to the Austrians. And uh, for me personally, as a rider and a trainer of horses, I love their personalities and their uh, athletic ability and the fact that they really are unique in the horse world in their intelligence. The life of a warm blood is only 15 years. With, with the Lipizzaner, you're talking 26, 30 years. The Lipizzaner are a very, very special breed. And uh, it's, it's not just a horse, that's a piece of culture, uh, European culture, world culture. If you know the story of the Lipizzaner, you will know very well the history of Europe. So that's, that's why Lipizzana is so important. Apart from being a very nice and intelligent animal. After September the 11th in the United States, it, it was impossible to talk about the horses. That's the first. The second, I think... It is the horse, the exterior, <coughs> and the movements of the horse, yeah, and how they look like, and the history. It, it makes it very... Very special for me, and I like this. I'm riding in baroque style also, and that's so, that's because the Lipizzan has my heart. <laughs> yeah. Bisschen tiefer machen. So ist richtig. Und schauen, dass sie schön mit dem Rhythmus, mit dem Takt gleich kommen. Since the mid 60s, trainers around the world have begun to specialize in teaching their pupils on the legendary Lipizzaner, bred for its compact, muscular body and patient temperament. But the story of the Lipizzaner and the classical riding with which it is linked begins in Vienna. Now the capital of Austria, but once the center of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Attracting tourists who come to admire the fine Baroque architecture this wonderful city has long been associated with prominent composers, such as Mozart, Beethoven and Strauss, and with traditional Viennese coffee houses. But in every souvenir shop, it is the porcelain figure of the graceful Lipizzaner stallion and his rider that represent one of Vienna's top tourist attractions, the Spanish Riding School. The school, which takes its name from a race of horse which originated from Spain, is still housed in the Imperial Palace, the Hofburg. That's the new residence of Maximilian II. When he came back as a young man from Spain with his new wife, he brought with him more than 100 Spanish horses. And his father built him this stable. And in the stable, uh, until now, the horses of the Spanish riding school. And this riding school is the building on the other side, a baroque building uh, from the 18th century. And between these two buildings, the horses have to pass every morning the street. The building was finished in 1735 and it was opened by the visit of the Emperor Charles VI and at this occasion 
they made a performance of 57 young stallions of Spanish stallions, Spanish horses of course. Eight years later, um, the daughter of the Emperor Maria Theresia celebrated the end of the war against Prussia and Bavaria in 1743 with a so-called carousel, that's something like a, a tournament with horses and carriages. Being one of the largest, most impressive buildings in the city has meant that this riding hall, with its portrait of its founder, Charles VI, was used for lavish balls, concerts, and indeed, the opening of the newly elected Austrian Parliament in 1848. Eventually, the building was used solely by the Spanish Riding School for the training of riders and horses in the disciplines of classical horsemanship. In 1580, Archduke Charles, the brother of Emperor Maximilian II, founded a stud farm in a deserted palace at Lipitza, near Trieste. Although some distance from Vienna, the area was known for its tough, versatile horses, and for the next 350 years, the stud supplied horses to the imperial court. It's from Lipitza that the Lipitzana takes its name, and it was here that the breeding of this noble horse began. This ancient stud has, at different times, been a part of Italy, Yugoslavia, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. With each political upheaval, the precious Lipizzana has come to the brink of extinction. Lipizza is now in Slovenia, close to the border with Italy. Only here do performance stallions train in close proximity to the mares they service. This can sometimes prove distracting. Lipizza uh, was founded in uh, 1580. That means that uh, Lipizza is one of the oldest studs in the world. Lipizza has been uh, breeding Lipizzana since the foundation up till now with uh, practically no breaks, only the breaks that were caused by, by these wars and political changes. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, heritage like this deserves the de uh, deserves, uh, best possible treatment. The serenity of the stud today masks its turbulent history. During the Napoleonic Wars, the Lipitza stud had to be evacuated three times in order to save the horses from Napoleon's army. The first attack was in 1797, when 300 Lipitzanas left for Hungary with the sound of the French guns in their ears. In 1805, the horses again were forced to flee Napoleon's troops. The worst flight of all was in 1809. 296 horses spent six weeks on the march to freedom in dreadful conditions, and many foals were lost. The horses remained in Hungary until the end of the Napoleonic Wars, by which time the buildings at Lipitza were in ruins and many of the records were lost. Lipitzana breeding at the stud did not resume properly until 1815 from a severely depleted stock. From then on, Lipitza supplied horses solely to the Spanish riding school. Some of the famous stallion lines were introduced, and the Lipitzana we know today was born. Lipitzanas broadly consist of the local horses from the Lipitza region, more graceful breeds from Spain, Italy and Arabia, and the heavier workhorses from Germany, Denmark and Eastern Europe. Concentration. Uh, in breeding sense on these classical mare families and, and stallion bloodlines uh, brings uh, uh, as a consequence uh, uh, also this, this original type of Lipizzana. Uh, in fact, Lipizzana is the breed that brings us, uh, brings in our time the, the, let's say, genes of old populations of horses that in fact uh, don't exist anymore. We cannot consider Lipizzana a modern warm blood horse it is one of the races uh, uh, called uh, nowadays Baroque horses. Uh, and uh, our intention is, of course, to preserve uh, this gene pool and also to, to preserve uh, the, the original type and the shape and, of course, also the original uh, um, performances of the horse. Lipizzanas are horses that are known in the world mostly uh, uh, by uh, their performances in Spanish riding school. But uh, on the other hand, uh, Lipizzanas uh, in uh, Eastern countries, Croatia, uh, Romania, 
um, Hungary, Slovakia were always used also as uh, carriage horses. Carriage driving is still very much an East European tradition. But it was during the Habsburgs' reign that it became very fashionable. And the strong, light, elegant Lipizzaners were ideally suited for this purpose. The Lipizzaners' reputed hardiness has often been attributed to the region around Lipizza, known as the Karst. This limestone landscape is close to the sea. The salt air quickly melts the winter snows, giving rise to lush spring pastures. This combination of stony ground, harsh conditions and good grass encourages a well-hoofed, sturdy breed that is slow to develop but copes easily with a hard, long working life. These young stallions, three to four years old and still grey, are allowed to mature as a herd. Their play often shows the first signs of the technical skills that will be refined through regular training. We train practically the majority of uh, the stallions that are bred uh, in, in Lipica in our program of classical dressage. At the moment we concentrate on cooperation with, uh, with uh, Mr. Wahl uh, because of the fact that he's uh, uh, not uh, only the former rider of Spanish riding school but one of uh, the, the most famous trainers. In, in also in sport dressage, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, he knows about Lipizzana uh, um, practically everything that uh, the trainer and rider should know and should learn about. George Val was a young rider with the Spanish riding school during the Second World War. He's well known in equestrian circles, having trained Swiss riders to Olympic gold medal standard. His long association with Lipizzanos has made him one of the leading authorities on the breed. He now spends much of his time advising young riders and trainers here in the riding hall at Lipizza and at the Spanish Riding School of Vienna. Horses and riders, as part of their training, are taught to perform maneuvers on the long rein, which are also carried out under the saddle. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. The rider places himself behind the stallion, potentially a dangerous place as one blow from the animal's hind leg could kill him. From this position, he gives his commands through the reins alone. The training methods employed by George Wall in classical dressage are those that have been handed down over many generations of riders from the Spanish riding school. The future of the training and breeding programs at Lipica are now in the hands of the Slovenian government. But during the First and Second World Wars, both the Stud and Lipizzanos were nearly lost altogether. In 1915, Italy joined the Allied forces against Austria. The Lipizzana herd was hurriedly transferred to temporary accommodation near Vienna. The foals were taken even further north, to Bohemia. A permanent home was eventually found at the end of the First World War in Piba, and the horses were moved there in 1920. The old Austrian military stud, surrounded by mountain pastures, provided similar conditions to those at Lipica. 
With the end of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the old Lipica stud was no longer within the new small state of Austria. Piba, however, provided sanctuary for the brood mares and foals that remained, a small nucleus of 97 animals. The ancient records and stud books brought from Lipica allowed the old bloodlines to be traced and the Lipizzaner herd slowly to be restored. In this box we have the oldest documentation about the Lipizzaner breed. We have books starting at around 1800. In that special book we have the dissension of the mares and the description what are the typical signs of the Lipizzaners. But the stallion lines, the six stallion lines, we can trace back till their founder. And that we can hear on that map. That, for example, is the trace back to the founder of the Maestoso line. Lipizzaner breeding follows the six stallion lines. The Plutos are powerful, large-bodied horses with long necks. The Conversano are distinguished by their strong Roman noses and noble movements. The Maestoso have a pronounced gait and strong muscular group. The Favori line are fine and light in build. The Neapolitans have large heads and a high knee bend. And the Siglavi incorporates the Arab type of Lipizzana, finer and lighter than the other stallion lines. These six stallion lines are all descendants from the old breeds and each brings to the Lipizzana its own attributes that can still be seen today. So that's Conversano Noblesa. He's 10 years old. He's a very beautiful stallion. And the typical marks or signs of a Lipizzana is the race is a, a horse of medium size. So the widow's high goes up from 155 to 160 centimeters. Important is the noble head, the black, the big black eyes. The head can be a bit curved, what you call a Roman nose. The neck is high positioned and it's strong. Important is the long, fine mane. The shoulder with the Lipizzanas is usually a bit steep. The back is strong and muscular and finishes in a, in a strong muscular group, but is usually with the Lipizzanas a bit flat. Important are the legs, which are not too long. With the Lipizzana stud now safely settled in Piba following the First World War, what became of the Spanish riding school of Vienna? Since the fall of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, the public mood was to erase anything connected with the imperial past, and the magnificent riding hall seemed destined to become a swimming pool or a warehouse. The new Republic of Austria eventually saw the cultural value of the school, but by that time, the number of horses had been reduced to 30, and there was little money for their upkeep. A note written by the last chief rider of the Habsburgs, who loyally stayed on, mentions the creation of a broom fund, as there wasn't even enough money to buy brooms for the stables. The change is uh, in a good way illustrated by these two pictures, because that's um, the last stable master, Van der Straten, the last stable master of the emperor, and he became the first civil director of the school in the Republic here, surrounded by his writers. Van der Straten managed to preserve the traditions that are still in practice today. The daily routine at the school's historic stables in the Stalberg begins at 6 a.m. Johann Hamminger, stable master since 1989, Make sure horses and riders are impeccably turned out for the morning training. The young stallions, recognizable by their darker coats, are the first to be exercised, being the most impatient, whilst others have to wait their turn. 
Mundane chores like mucking out take up a large part of the morning routine. The sign above each stall carries the name of its occupant. This is derived from the name of the stallion and mare lines of its parents. The older stallions, known as the professors, are given the freedom of their stalls. Most of these straw, hay and oats for the horses are grown in the fields surrounding the stud at Piva, so the supply and quality are guaranteed. The use of birch twigs as whips is another old tradition. Cut from the school's own forest every January, they're selected and prepared by the young riders. Having been with the school for over 30 years, Johann Hamminger is passionate about the horses in his care. Also it's very important. Also for me it's a very nice feeling on a Sunday when I'm there in the forefront. I watch. It's been a wonderful feeling for me. I watch the horses every Sunday at their public performances. I look at the way they present themselves. It's a wonderful experience for me to see the horses enjoying their work, that they're doing well. The feeling that the horses are having fun and want to perform, that's important for me. This is the best horse in the stable, our superstar. As a young stallion, he showed that he was a real leader. All the stallions, superstars and novices alike, take part in this daily training when rider and horse train in Utekol, or the high school of classical riding. The first act of every rider is to salute the portrait of their founder, Charles VI. The trained riders wear brown dress coats, deerskin breeches, black high top boots and traditional bicorn hats. The riding team consists of elev, or novices, riders, and chief riders. The chief riders train the riders, and the riders train the novices, each passing on the school's traditional methods by word of mouth. These are normal working saddles used for training, and to go with these are the snaffle bits. All horses have these bits, but they're particularly important for stallions. The support on the outside is very wide, which is comfortable for the horse. In the Spanish riding school, the training program for the Lipizzanas lasts for three to four years. Only in the third or final stage does the true Otecol training begin. A well-executed piaf is rewarded with a sugar lump, retrieved from a pocket especially sewn into the uniform for this purpose. It's the responsibility of the chief riders to see that the high standards of the school are maintained 
and that all exercises performed by the horse and rider are carried out with precision. While the chief riders are in charge of the training, it's the stable master, Hamminger, who looks after the tack. To go with the saddles are the saddle parts. On these you can see the rank of the rider. Two stripes signifies rider or bereiter. Three stripes signifies chief rider or oberbereiter. At the end of the training session, the grooms come to reclaim their horses, apparently unfazed by the opulence of what must be one of the grandest indoor riding halls in the world. The Lipizzaners, tired after their morning exercise, return to their stables in the Stalbo. Although the school and the Lipizzaners had been saved at the end of the First World War, darker times lay ahead for both. In 1938, Austria was annexed to the German Third Reich. However, the school was placed under the command of the German army, not under the Nazi party. The stud was passed to the German Ministry of Agriculture. A letter from the army headquarters in Berlin confirms these decisions without the need to bring these questions to the attention of the Führer. German troops moved into Vienna and the Spanish riding school was made available for the training of German cavalry officers and for entertaining Nazi dignitaries. Van der Straten resigned his post, and Major Alois Podaisky was appointed as his successor. Major Podaisky was to have a crucial role in saving the school and the Lipizzaners in the years that followed. An officer from the Austrian army, he'd served in the First World War and won a bronze medal for riding at the 1936 Berlin Olympic Games. He had enlisted at the age of 18, his father also having been a soldier. His mother is pictured here outside the family home in Wells. The house, number nine, still stands a short distance from the barracks where Podaisky trained and was later to become the home of the Spanish riding school. Alois Podaisky took up his position as director of the school in June 1939. The staff at this time were obliged to wear German military uniforms. Among the young recruits was Corporal George Wahl. Was mich bewegt hat, war, das war während dem Krieg. Der Krieg hat schon angefangen gehabt, 1939. Und ich bin At the start of the war in 1939, I was in the cavalry. In 1940, I was moved to the Spanish Riding School. At the time, Podaisky was the senior rider and manager of the school, and he was looking for new, able recruits. He saw me in East Prussia before he got me transferred. There were also other new recruits from northern Germany. At first, there were only three of us, Meiringer, Heinrichs and me. Yes, during the Second World War, during the, the time of the German government in Austria, the riding school was under um, military government. And uh, this photo shows a transport from the horses from the inner city to a park, to a garden outside of Vienna um, because of the bumps in the city. Over the summer months from 1941, the horses were kept at the park built by Franz Josef I for his consort Elizabeth. The 
palace, stables and surrounding woods are still used by the school as a summer retreat. Podaisky, in his autobiography, recalls the horses' pleasure at coming here from their indoor life in the city. The joy of jumping over the streams and doing their morning exercises with the sun on their backs. But the tranquility was short-lived. The threat of Allied air attack on Vienna increased, and the school and its white stallions had to be evacuated. They were not to perform in the Grand Riding Hall for another ten years. On March the 6th, 1945, permission was granted for the Lipizzaners to leave Vienna by train for St. Martin, Upper Austria, where alternative accommodation had been found. At Linz, 60 miles outside Vienna, the train was held up by a two-hour bombing raid. Podaisky and his wife remained on the train with the horses until the all-clear was given. The 190-mile journey to St. Martin took four days, but not a single horse was lost. Exile for the Lipizzaners was to be in a castle belonging to Count Arco Valley, who had been imprisoned by the Nazis. Podaisky, uncertain of what might happen when the Allied forces arrived, ordered that the school treasures, the pictures, records and performance tack should be bricked up in concealed hiding places. The horses were housed in the castle stables. For exercise they were taken out into the castle grounds, keeping out of sight of the Allied bombers which frequently passed overhead. As the US Army, under the control of General Patton, began to arrive in Upper Austria, the riders' German uniforms were hidden and military weapons were thrown into the nearby river, enabling the school to appear as a civilian organization. A hastily arranged performance was prepared for General Patton in the grounds of the castle. Branches were gathered from the woods to decorate the makeshift stands. The precious performance saddles, bridles and uniforms were removed from their hiding places. The horses went through their Piaf, Levards and Caprioles in front of the American troops. This unique footage from 1945 was taken by an American serviceman and recently donated by his widow to the Lipizzaner Museum in Vienna. At first it was not clear whether General Patton, not known for his humour, approved of the White Stallions. However, being a rider himself, he soon fell under their spell. At the end of the performance, Podaisky approached General Patton to make a formal request for his help to protect the riding school and the Lipizzaner horses. This is a newspaper which shows this scene after the performance for the American army when Podaisky had the idea to, to put the, the whole Lipizzans under the, under the protection of the U.S. Army and General Patton. The outcome, it seems, was successful, and the Spanish Riding School once again was saved. The visitor's book from this traumatic time is still kept in the castle by the current Count Arco de Zinneberg and records the events of 1945. At Podaisky's invitation, General Patton took the opportunity to ride one of the school's Lipizzaners. But what of the mares and foals at the stud in Piba? In 1942, all the horses from Piba and the Italian stud at Lipizza were moved to Hostal, a village in Bohemia, but the exact reason for this is unknown. Shortly before the end of the war, all the Lipizzaners from Hostal were secretly handed over to the Americans, although technically they were in an area assigned to the Soviet forces. 
led by Colonel Reed, the horses were returned to Podaisky in Upper Austria. The following year, the school found a new home in the former Dragoon barracks at Wells. Once more, the surroundings were modest compared to Vienna, but Podaisky made full use of the riding hall, putting on several performances for local Austrians and visiting Americans. The school also performed at the Wells Agricultural Show, seen here in a newsreel of 1948. Der klassischen hohen Schule. These demonstrations of the Lipizzaner's abilities preceded international tours, first to Switzerland, then to Germany, America, Britain, and Denmark. These tours made a lasting impression and made the Spanish Riding School and the Lipizzaners world famous for the next three decades. The gala performance in October 1955 marked the end of an era. The exile of the Spanish Riding School was finally over. With the signing of the Austrian State Treaty, the school could return at last to its former home in Vienna. The Winter Riding Hall had fallen into disrepair the arena reduced to storing state scenery. But the opulent chandeliers were retrieved and rehung, and the building slowly restored. For many years, the performances of the Spanish Riding School were one of the highlights of every state visit. Today, along with the Viennese Boys' Choir, it's one of the main tourist attractions of Vienna. Visitors to the school can attend one of the daily training sessions of the Lipizzanas and see how each rider communicates with his horse. This language between the rider and the horse would be called the aids. You have the weight, you have your leg, and you have your hands. And this natural aids we use because the horse is to have natural reflex. If you put your weight to one side or forward or backwards, if you use your leg on the horse's body, to have a natural reflex, and the same with, with the rein. So this natural reflex, the rider used to form and train the horse. And that's what we call the classical way of riding. It would be not classical way of riding if you teach a horse something by clipping with the fingers or by talking to him. This is maybe nice, uh, but this is not the classical way of riding. We use the natural movements, what you can see outside by young horses playing on the fields. You see the horses crossing the legs, so we teach them to do the half pass. You can see the horse, um, if a stallion likes to, uh, he, he sees a nice mare on the other side of the fence, so he moves the legs, which is about the piaf, yeah? So we use all these things to form the horse. So we do nothing which is not natural. Not what we ask the horse, even if you do a pirouette, uh, it's being done because the horse can do a pirouette, but because the horse don't know it but we use the pirouette to get a better canter. And just for example, Xenophon, he was 400 before Christ. He started to train horses in this classical way because he needed that horse for the war. And he had advantage against the other riders because he could steer at his horse. He could turn the horse quickly and then maybe the others could. I mean, I don't know exactly how it was at that time. Um, <clears throat> but that was the, the, the actual idea of training and gymnastic the horse and that was that is what the school still has to do to keep this way of riding alive while the spanish riding school provides a showcase for the magnificent lipizzanas interest in this ancient breed will continue but its survival will always depend on careful breeding the horses saved at the end of the second world war were returned to piba in 1952 but it was a comparatively small number Inevitable inbreeding occurred, leading to a lowered resistance to disease. In 1983, an outbreak of an equine viral infection related to rhinopneumonitis wiped out 22 Lipizzaner foals and eight brood mares. Since that time, meticulous breeding methods have been enforced. 
With the introduction of fresh blood, inbreeding has largely been avoided and a strong, pure breed has been maintained. Stallions, which have been brought from the Spanish riding school to the Piba stud, are led in from their stable to the broodmare they will cover. The first thing what we do is we test the blood uh, and test the genetic pace of both. So it sounds very scientific. It is, it is, it is. is. is this because we, we just use stallions from the Spanish riding school and, and mares from the stud. So we have around 400 horses for a combination. So we must be very careful not to come into inbreeding. So we have to do the, all this blood test and then look at the pedigrees where we can find the, the common ancestors. So that's very important. With this particular stallion, what bloodline is he? He's a Pluto and we test, we have a look on the pedigrees before we cover, of course, and we see how deep is the the inbreeding. Now, when we, when we look at these horses, do they look as if they like each other? No, it, it doesn't like it. He's not having a very good morning, is he? And so, are all the stallions here chosen from the riding school? Uh, we we choose them in a sort of a commission from people of the stud and also from the riders because it's important for the riders of the Spanish riding school what stallion they bring for breeding because they have to train the folds of them later on. And how do you make your selection with your, with your stallions? How do you choose which ones you're going to use first? Yes, it is important that we have from every stallion line around the same amount here in the stud and also in the Spanish riding school. Uh, how young? This, this seems to be a very young mare here. Yes. She's quite dark. How, yes. how old is she? She is uh, six years old and she has. She will be covered for the first time because we do a sort of a basic training before we cover them. We grow them up till they four years and then do, they do a two-year training. In that time she goes three times up to the mountains in the summertime and when she's four years old she comes back to the stud and then she starts the training. We start with a driving training for one year and after that we do a riding training also one year. What is the criteria for a good brood man? Yeah, of course the fertility, that's the most important. And then she has to have uh, the right signs for a Lipisana. She must have the signs what we uh, talk about the breeding aims. She must have <laughs> A very nice head with these typical dark eyes. The nose can be a bit of a, like you say, a Roman nose. She has to have a very a strong, higher position neck. And that goes to a very strong and muscular back. And that back ends in a, sometimes with the Lipisanas in a flat group. And the Lipisana must be also have uh, the, the typical meshes because we just breed mares when they have uh, around 155 to 160 centimeters uh, height of the withers. This must be a very frustrating time for the stallion if he's got all these yeah, mares just, parading just in front of him and then we find that we don't actually have a mare that likes him. Yeah, but the mares, what we know, they will, will get covered. They come at last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will, we will get yeah, yeah. yeah. She I will. think she likes him. Yes. 
I'm the other stallions now. You, you bring another stallion up. Yes, of course. Now the next stallion is coming and and he will cover first test a couple of mares and then he will cover the mare we have what will fit to him. What's going to happen to this fella? He's, he will become cleaned and he goes back to his stable and probably if we have a second mare for him he will cover in the evening again. This process will now be continued through your, your covering season. How long is that? We start our covering season on the 15th of February and we stop on the 15th of July. So uh, pregnancy lasts 11 months. We get our foals from middle of January to the middle of June. What, what exactly are you looking for? Character. They must be learn easy, otherwise they can't do the training in the Spanish writing school. They must must be handled easy, that's important, but that's what they have to learn in the first three years. So that's also a reason why they shouldn't grow up wild and then we, uh, pick them out of a herd. That's important that they have to learn from the first day in their life. <laughs> All the stallions are tested in the Spanish riding school anyway, because we just use fully trained stallions here for covering. And we test the mares for two years when they do their driving and riding training, and afterwards we know what horses we can use for breeding anyway. <laughs> It's the last cover of her, and so she is already at the end. Um, so she, She's she, not quite yeah, as receptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes the smell. <coughs> you, you send how many stallions each year down to Vienna? Usually six to eight stallions. Out of, uh, yeah, 25 to 30 stallions of one year. But in future we will increase a little bit because we uh, think that we also will increase the herd in the Spanish riding school. They have first choice out of these 25 to 30 stallions and the riders from there come here and uh, our people what are in charge for breeding together make a decision what stay and go to the Spanish riding school. Is this little foal here, is this little foal going to keep his colour? Uh, that foal will become white for sure because already now you can see if you watch carefully the white hair also in the brown in the in the brown hairs. We will be sure that that will become a white probably a white stallion for the Spanish writing school. And how old is he going to be when he's white? That depends very much on the horse. Some are already when they are five or six years old, they are already white. Some of them aren't even quite Right when they are ten, we do the first description, the first documentation already when they one one week old. That's the first time when we already write down the signs they have, the color they have, the behavior they show, and sometimes also special marks they have. The personality of the mother does that affect the personality of the foal in any way? Yes. Yes, because if you have a dominant mother, the foal 
will show in his behavior also a dominance. Mr. Weiss is the most important person here in the stable. He is the man the foal sees first. And so the first relationship to man, horse and man is with him. Here is our youngest filly and that filly is very important for our breeding program because the mother is a member of one of our classical mare lines and we have got her. She's the, the only member of the mare line Rava. We got her from, from Topper Chunky and we covered her last year with a, with a stallion from the Spanish Riding School. And so we are very proud that we have got this two days old filly from her. The success of the breeding programs at Piba, Lipitza and in other Lipitzana studs in recent years should ensure the purity of the breed. The future of their survival will now also depend on the continued enthusiasm of the general public, trainers and riders who cherish this unique and ancient breed.